This week we're looking at affinity photo and frequency separation. We're going to take this image and change it to this. Last week I demonstrated a technique called frequency separation using Photoshop. Following that video I've had quite a few questions asking can you do the same thing in Affinity Photo and the answer is yes and in today's video I'm going to look at just how easy it is to do that. Now at the moment I've got open on screen one of my landscape images that I shot the other morning. So far all I've done is I've applied some denoise to the sky because it was a little bit grainy. What I'm going to do first is select the background layer in the layers tab and I'm going to duplicate it. Now because I've duplicated it, I've still got this live filter attached to it, so I'll delete that. And I'm just left with a straightforward layer. And I'll duplicate that again. This second layer, I'm just going to hide it for the moment. And instead, I'm going to start by selecting the first background layer. To create your frequency separation, you don't need to do all the blurring and apply image that you needed to do in Photoshop. There's actually a much easier way in Affinity. And if you come up to the filters menu, you'll find there's actually a frequency separation filter and it does the hard work for you. When we create a frequency separation, what we're doing is we're creating an image that contains color information and a separate image that contains the detail. We're separating them. Now in Affinity Photo, we refer to the color information as being low frequency and the detail information as being high frequency. And this frequency separation filter allows us to control that. If you've watched the Photoshop video I did, you'll know that we use different radiuses for different features. So for example, we used a radius of about six pixels if we were going to sharpen the image. Now, as I'm changing this radius, you'll notice that the frequency is also responding to it. Sorry, the high frequency is also responding to it to separate out the detail. For this example, I'm going to create a sharpening layer and I'm going to use about four pixels. All I have to do is click apply. What Affinity Photo has actually done is it's created from one layer, a high frequency layer and also a low frequency layer. And it's automatically set the blending mode of the high frequency layer to linear light and the low frequency layer is still normal. If I turn off the high frequency layer, you can see that the low frequency layer is blurred. And when we turn on the high frequency layer, it comes back into focus. So that's our frequency separation. I'm just going to group those two together for the moment in a folder. And I'm going to call that sharpening. If you've watched the other video, you'll know that one of the features that we can do with this, or one of the things we can do with this uh, frequency separation is, we can apply sharpening just to the detail layer, or the high frequency layer. I'm going to have a look at doing that now, and I'm going to zoom in to 200% and focus on this rock in the foreground. And now all I need to do is use my unsharp mask to apply sharpening. And here, as soon as I do that, I only have to apply a small amount of sharpening and it's really brought that layer into focus. I can apply that now and I've created myself a frequency separation that's very much for sharpening. And I can turn that off and on to create the sharpening effect. Now I'll just collapse that for a moment and I'm going to repeat the exercise I did in the previous video of adding a nice autumn effect or a glowing effect to this image to really enhance it. So I'll select this other background layer, I'll just turn that on. I'm going to again select my frequency separation and this time I'm going to use a higher radius and I'm going to use something in the region of about 28 pixels. I'll apply that and again Affinity Photo creates the two layers and I'll put those together now in a new folder and I'll call that Autumn Effect. If I expand that folder 
and I turn off the frequency separation, you can see now the background layer or the low frequency layer is just blurred. It comes back into focus when we apply the high frequency. To create the glowing effect, all we need to do is reduce this layer that produces the sharpening. And as we do that, it creates this very nice effect where everything's becoming blurred. But at the moment, it doesn't give you the classic autumn effect. To do that, all we need to do is duplicate this low frequency layer. And we'll now set it, instead of being normal, to soft light. And immediately it creates that very contrasty, deep, glowing effect. Now it's a little bit too strong, so what we'll do is we'll reduce it down to something that looks a little better. And now, because we don't want everything to be ultra blurred in this, we'll actually start to use some masks. So I'll add a mask to the low frequency layer that is the normal layer. And we'll select the mask and I'll come over to my tools and I'll select a paintbrush. We'll set the opacity quite low, so something around 10%. It's got a soft edge to it and I'm using black paint. And all I'm going to do now is paint over on the mask these rocks in the foreground. And as I paint, I'm creating a mask that will hide the softening effect on these rocks. And so it sort of focuses the attention onto the rocks, which are now looking quite sharp. And I'll just also apply a little bit of the masking onto the background here in in the mid ground rather and that's created the effect onto this rock so we can now see a background glowing effect and we can see the foreground rocks in sharp relief now if we've applied a little bit too much sharpening to those rocks and I think we have all we have to do is switch colors to paint with white and we can gradually paint over those until we get the blend as we would like it. And that's looking about right. We can also, if we want to further fine tune this sharpening effect on the linear light layer, and we appear to have about right at about 65% in this image. If I turn off that uh, glowing effect, that was the original. That's the adjustment. As you can see, it's made a substantial difference, and I'm sure you'll agree that Affinity Photo's much easier to use for this effect than Photoshop was. If you haven't seen the original video and you want to know more about frequency separation, I'll put the link in the details of this video below. I hope you found that useful. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you next week for another video.